and we don't have visual on Kim. Let's fix that. There we go. Welcome to Stories from the Fae stream and our second build stream here in Tailspire. My name is Hank, yeah. and to my left I have Kim. I'm yeah. here. <laughs> He's here. Some yeah. some seem to work, and we seem to be streaming as well. And today we are building in this wonderful game called Tailspire. Isn't that right, Kim? Yes, that's right. And, and uh, yeah, we already started building some parts of our world in it. So yeah. we're going to continue with doing that. Do you want to tell them what we're building on today? Uh, okay, so yeah, we have different uh, uh, districts in our city. Uh, and uh, today we're going to build the, uh, continue building on the industrial district. Um, and it's gonna be nice, it's gonna be cool. Uh, Hag has already started a lot and they have already built a lot on it. But we are gonna continue. And uh, well, I have got a, a small part to try to finish today. So we'll <laughs> see if I manage to do that. Exactly. Yeah. So we are building the town or the, the capital city of our uh, kingdom series. And yes. uh, it's, as you said, divided into different districts. And uh, I guess we can talk so about some of the districts and about Sirius and about our world as we go along today as well. But uh, yeah. I'm going to show you the place we're going to build today. It's actually going to be a canal district next to the industrial district. So here we've uh, lined out where our canal is going to be. And we're going to yeah. fill this little area here with uh, shops and uh, maybe some... Uh, Houses? I'll leave that up to you. You can be as creative as you want, Kim. <laughs> yes. And, I am uh, I am thinking about a, a merchant uh, street or something like yes, that. You will see. Exactly. And to to my defense, or uh, or to, to Kim's defense, I haven't built all these buildings myself. I've actually used a re great resource for those who are new to Tailspire, or veterans as well, called Tales Bazaar, where you can actually just copy-paste your creations uh, and uh, then send them as a string of text to this lovely little website called Tail Bazaar, and people can uh, just copy that text and copy paste it into their own creations. So these houses yeah. that we see here, uh, just where we are building today, are actually just copy pasted in from uh, another creator. I can't remember his name or her name right now, or their name, but I'll be sure to. Uh, check it up and uh, post it in the comments later uh, but some of these houses I've built myself some of them are borrowed and they are inspired from our campaign uh, that we played oh, over a year ago now <laughs> before the yeah. dark times and one of the yes. characters uh, called Corvus Corax owns a little establishment known as Troget, the trough so I just started building a little cellar down here where uh, the trough is supposed to be and i can start by showing you this little amazing place so this is the bar called the trough it's a very cozy little cellar bar not much to look upon uh, with a few beds here in the back so the character corvus he owns this establishment and he's sort of a shady character if you ask me wouldn't you agree kim well shady is the right word for it i would say uh, so um, I don't really know what if you can call it a fancy establishment, but cozy, definitely. So I started building cozy this. Is a good word. Yeah, this was actually one of the first things I built in Tailspire because I wanted to like pay homage to our campaign. And then uh, I decided, well, this cellar needs to have a building on top of it. So I built a building on top of it and then we built some more buildings. And then I realized we have to have a street. So I built a street and uh, then it sort of escalated from there. And now we're trying yeah. to build the, uh, the districts. And uh, that's where we are today. We continue. Exactly. It's a big city. It, it's it, a uh, very big city. We started out, well, it's a big city. It's one of, I would say, one of the biggest, biggest city in, in the world. Yeah. Say, so. so this is not a project that's ever gonna be finished in any sort of way, but it's good. I'll keep, keep on showing people here. I don't know if you've started building yet or not, but... Uh, well, I am doing roads. It's <laughs> not really that interesting right now, yeah. so... So yeah. since, since this is the right. industrial complex, there's a lot of warehouses, there are some workshops, and there are, like, for rent workshops as well. 
we have these cesspools that I'm building right now, which will be from the tannery, like the off water that uh, then slowly is going to make its way out into the canal district. So we have all these different things. But the thing about Senit, the name of the city, it also has a very large and complex sewage system. So I've built sewer labyrinths underneath the city as well just so that uh, we can go adventuring underground if we want to. Yeah. So uh, every now and then I build a little bit more and a little bit more and we come up with these amazing sort of pieces to the puzzle that makes the whole city uh, alive. And we've already tried a little campaign part down here in the sewer where uh, you and uh, Brian. Is that where the dinosaur is right now? No, the the di I, I removed the dinosaur. I don't think the dinosaur is still there. <laughs> I just wanted to scare them a bit. They were uh, actually testing out some rules for the role-playing engine and they were just standing here with these two characters down in the sewer and they were fighting back and forth and rolling dice. So I just walked in a huge, big velociraptor next to them. Yeah. Next to them. Yeah. Trying to scare us. Well, you managed. So. Yeah. I am trying to figure this out. Always moving platforms and such. It's, it's like the hardest part, in my opinion. <laughs> I have a great idea. Just see how I make it work. There we go. Now the raptor is back. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> let's but see. Let's get into it. So, as I said, this is uh, part of our role playing world and uh, the uh, role-playing engine that we will make for this world is underway as well uh, and as it will also be part of our lore and I was actually working on a piece of lore earlier uh, this week and I was gonna share it with you on this stream I thought King yes cool uh, so well, you, you have not even told me no, about I haven't told you about it so. yet so since we no. are while, while we're building this I'll slowly get into it building suspense See what happens <laughs> so i was uh, thinking of our conversations that we had uh, the other day about uh, yeah. well the, the last stream where we talked about norse mythology and i figured it would be kind of fun to, to talk about how norse mythology inspired us for some of the gods and uh, myths that we've created in our world and then i got inspired yeah. Because I was thinking about uh, a particular myth from Norse mythology, the myth of Ragnarok. Yeah. And maybe yeah. Seen... Like the big the part big... of the whole. The Norse inspiration mythology. for more than a thousand uh, metal bands. Yeah. Uh, Very true. <laughs> so uh, I was thinking about Ragnarok, and then I was thinking about some of the parts of Ragnarok, uh, mainly how. Uh, sort of the Fenris wolf and how Loki they're both captured underground and without yeah. spoiling for our next stream which will be a storytelling stream uh, we also have a creature caught underground uh, yeah. and uh, hopefully we'll tell that story next week if you tune in for our first storytelling stream but anyway uh, as I realized that we also have creatures underground and we have sort of the uh, heroes and uh, anti-heroes and we have uh, this trickster god that yeah. also sort of disappeared or has been banished i figured that we share a lot of similarities with the ragnarok myth so i figured what would be stories from the face version of ragnarok hmm. and i realized that that or i sort of started started the uh, like pitching ideas to myself what would happen would, would yeah, this... Yeah, I mean, like... Yeah, go ahead. The interesting part would be, like... If, I mean, like, we have been talking about the different characters we have, and we have also made a timeline that yeah. nobody has seen yet about our world. <laughs> yeah. And uh, are you meaning, like, the end of that timeline? Like exactly. What happens in the end? And is that a story like uh, Ragnarok that the people of the world actually tell? Or is that mm -hmm. uh, just something for us to know? As creators of the world and I thought it would be more interesting to actually write the story down and have it just like Ragnarok be sort of a prophecy of how everything will end and perhaps 
if we want to even start over again as oh, it does cool. in the north map yeah so it's think... gonna be anything about the dark world tree or the dark seeds exactly work on that part uh, oh, i was thinking about the that. dark tree which i think no one else but us knows about until now yeah. so the dark this tree and of course the there will be have must have been roots that have been growing underground before the tree actually springs to life and i figured like yeah. both physical physical roots actually go in in in, uh, in the minds and hearts of men which is a very nice narrative okay okay yeah, yeah. Like a, a tiny piece of darkness that lives inside of men yeah, yeah. exactly because uh, our god ixna the uh, the goddess of mischief and uh, death and uh, destruction and uh, everything the, the the dark one the betrayer uh she disappears but uh, but she doesn't disappear it's like poof she's gone she sort of fades away but she doesn't fade yeah. away completely she's still that sort of shadow or whisper on the wind that nobody really can put their finger on so that sort she's of like when you get stains on your clothes you're like exactly it's oh, her it's not yeah when you her. stump your toe it's her she's the one who moved that chair so you would hit your foot on it yes. so basically that gives us a good clothes. that gives us a good backdrop for for something that's working from behind the shadows waiting to spring yeah. up again and i was thinking about this sort of narrative and then i realized that we we had this big creature caught underground just like the fenris wolf once was caught a creature that actually uh, stems from the creation of ixna herself as well so uh, uh, I figured I'd started writing some uh, plot hooks for that and uh, I'm starting to find like this can really be can really be something and I wanted yeah. to just okay. move, pitch or sort of uh, wage your reaction to that as we go for it uh, I am <laughs> all for it real you know. <laughs> No, but it, it's interesting because she is a complex character and we have been working a lot on our gods and demigods in the world so far. We've been working a lot to make them more complex than just evil or good. You know, yeah. Everybody has like a dark side or a, or, a, or a lighter side or maybe it's not even about just being pure evil it's about having your own ambitions and going for it like yeah. Ixna she she is the ambition itself she wants to be very stronger than everybody else and she succeeds in many ways but at what cost and so on yeah uh, so it's very complex and I kind of like her as a character a lot uh, I actually I can I can tell you you guys to listen I was like, in the beginning, I was like, okay, we're gonna make a, a character, we're gonna make Ixna, she's gonna be more of the, yeah, the, the, the god of mischief, the, the bad one, the one that people curse upon when they are, uh, when they curse, they're gonna curse upon her. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we, we are creating a, 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 a female character, that's what we are making, and I was like, okay is that right is that what we're supposed to do is it okay is it what we want is it you know this is this is the questions we ask ourselves for every creature or every character we create in the world is it a, a character and what does it mean and what does it stand for yeah and what does yeah how this? how do we work with representation and also mm. how do we work with stereotyping as well because you don't want yeah. to have like can we have a strong female character? Of course. Can we have a strong e evil female character? Yes. But can yeah. all our strong female characters be evil? No. 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 <laughs> and so on and so on. And I mean, like, yeah, because we, we don't want to fall into the, the, the pit of uh, Disney villainess. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, when you are a strong evil, you become as Maleficent. I mean, like, Maleficent yeah. has been redone a lot. And she, and showing more like a strong female character yeah. in the latest movies that it's just named Maleficent. But I mean, like we don't want to have like stereotyping um, an evil, an evil queen or an evil god. No. So we've been working a lot on that, um, and I, I did ask a lot of my friends, uh, and and they were like, "Well, of course you can make a strong female character. We would support that." I was like, "Okay, 
let's make a strong female character uh, that is not maybe all through and through good, but she is not she is not weak and she is not she's she's ambitious and I and I like that about her. Yeah, she's kind of cool. And uh, I like that we work with that as well. That she is sort of Maru's lost ambition. They will talk more about the creation of her and oh, what yeah. she is. But yeah, don't don't spoil <laughs> early stories yet. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. Um, it we can also well maybe tell a little bit about that. We uh, two years ago, 2019, we did a fire show uh, that was all about that storyline. There was a story about Maru and Ixna. And hopefully this year we will come back to it and tell it again. So uh, people can see it. We will record it uh, better this year. Yeah. And so people can see it even though we can't go there and see it. Exactly. So we can... and, uh... is that actually craft you're using? What did you say? Is it? Is it grass? No, is it swamp? Maybe. Yeah, know. it's it's called foam grass. Uh, it's a mechanic they're experimenting with right now uh, to actually have like these foam boards that uh, stem from old wargaming and like warhammer and have, things like that. So if I levels the water above it, it's gonna be green. It's kind of cool. Sorry, I'm not gonna have. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm using it as a substitute for water now because the water line. Uh... No, wait. What did you do to my water line? <laughs> oh, well, I, okay, I, uh, I can lower the water line. Like, no, 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 no. Up. Ah, uh, we'll check. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> I can fix that later. And uh, so I think it looks Ooh, sort of like contaminated water, which works. It's supposed yeah. to be grass, but from afar, it looks like contaminated water. Kind of do. Yeah. They do have swamp things now. Don't exactly. They? Yeah, they have a new booster pack that came out with swamp and other things. You can make swamp floor. Yeah. Okay, that is kind of cool. So you can also make like puddles and such swamp yeah. puddles. Oh, okay, cool. So we can. Well, I'm continuing this uh, harbor part. Yeah. Okay, you are uh, clipping it. No, that's yeah. Right. So you can make sort of like sludge puddles or you can put it on top. I was thinking about um, harbor stuff here, but that is maybe wrong. I wanted to make this like a tiny street of black market. Kind of cool. It's yeah. Because in, it's like at the industrial end where they just spill out the... the Nobody wants to walk here board. anyway. <laughs> no, not, not if you don't want to have some mischiefs. Uh, if you check over where I wanted to build the uh, tannery, we also have a cesspool there where I put some harbor and harbor stuff that you can just uh, copy paste if you want to. No, uh, it's good. I will begin from the beginning. Yeah. Just three to see what I can do. Uh, oh, stall fruit and such. Well, they're not going to sell fruit in this place. Maybe magic fruits. Vegetables. Oh, this is for him. Oh, this is cool. Oh, no. It's like, these pieces are so tiny, but then again, I am just really zoomed out, so I think it's everything is much bigger than it is. That is 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, Okay, okay, I can make 10. But as we yeah, anyway. mentioned, we're going to have a, our first uh, storytelling stream next week. And I'm actually yeah. kind of uh, stoked about that. I've been uh, rereading some of the stories we've written, uh, especially the creation story and the story of the first spoiler. And uh, I was thinking about retelling the both of those stories uh, like back to back since the one follows the other and they are actually the first of three acts from the fire show that you mentioned earlier like, yeah. uh, the fire show we made is in three acts uh, describing the creation of ixna and the world and the, the gods as well so i thought that would be a, like a good starter for our storytelling stream to actually get people a sense of the mythology of our world uh, 
although I'm very, very anxious to have more storytelling streams as well, where we can talk, uh, tell our yeah, the story about the first mead and actually do a comparison, maybe talk about the um, the inspiring story from Norse mythology where they make the mead of poetry. Yeah. And things like that. Yes. So I. That is a very long story, though. Yes. <laughs> Many stories are the first uh, mead story in the Norse mythology. Is such a long yeah. story. If you're gonna take every part of it, no. but it's kind of yeah, cool. Exactly. But that's the fun thing about them too. You don't have to take every part. You can take the best parts and t make it your story and tell whatever you want to, which I like. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. Cool. I'm gonna make more of these. I am going bananas on the tents here. I can see that. Looks good. But I am trying to make. But it's so cozy. I just want to go in here and live here. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. And when did you want to do that? We have also Paul who said he wants to have a drink at the trough and I would agree with him. Like there's a lot of like when you do the role playing campaigns and you actually like start explaining and you build up the atmosphere and things like that and your characters come alive. It, it's almost like having a drink there, but you, you sort of want to go back there. You want to be there for real. And that's sort of why I built the trough first of all anyway, because I really like the setting. And another setting from our campaign is actually the uh, the house where uh, Tyr the Dwarf lives. And uh, I was thinking of building that on one of our streams as well. And maybe actually invite Jonas, who plays the character and who is uh, a longtime patron of ours. Now a lost patron, unfortunately. Uh, but it would be nice to invite Jonas and actually build his house with him. Because I know he's the back the the Tailspire uh, campaign as well, so he would be <laughs> he would be a really lovely lovely stream, I think, to be able to build yes. it with him. Is there like weapons and such you can just put on tables? No, it's not. If you want to put There's... props on tables, or yeah, I can put props on tables. I yeah, guess. exactly. So many spices. Maybe I will make a spice stand. <laughs> Vegetables, fruit, fruit, and fruit. I mean. Oh, spice. Okay, so these are spices, but these are not nice spices. I'm just, I'm just saying that these are, these are the poisonous kind. Just putting that <laughs> poisonous spices. There's poisonous spices. <laughs> this is where shady dealers lives. I can add a shady dealer. Is there any yeah. shady characters I can add? There's a lot. If you go to uh, the NPC part of the uh, character oh, the uh, building oh, menu. Blacksmith. Okay, yeah, I can. There's a lot shady. of shady characters. Yes. And you can also so rename them. As, since you have GM privileges, you can rename them and give them shady names. Like, oh, that's a real shady one. <laughs> Yeah, I want this shady one. I just want to turn him. I can't flip him. If you if you put him down, plop him down first, where you want him, and then you can select him. Mm -hmm. And if you hold Alt, you can rotate him when you. Oh, you okay, have to okay. put him down oh, first. Oh. You can't go flipping him around. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I'm getting. There it. I'm you getting rotate it. him. And that's actually a good segue into actually talking about uh, character controls. So let's do that for a minute, because. Uh, there will be a lot of people playing Tailspire for the first time, I guess. And it's yeah. uh, it would be great if they can uh, actually come and uh, come and see this stream and get something out of it. So I'm going to take my favorite shroomer over here. And welcome, Olaf. Good kväll på dig med. So I'm going to uh, pick good up... Evening. Good evening, exactly. So I'm going to pick my um, favorite maybe, shroomer over How did you rename characters? What did you rename? Yeah, them? so if you right-click a character, you get up this lovely little dial menu where you have stats, yeah. you have emotes, enable torch, which will give them a little light effect. You can make them invisible for uh, for players. 
and for yourself as well. But yeah. if you're a GM, you can press tab and you will be able to see all the invisible characters. Uh, then you have GM tools. Here you can rename the character. You can give player permissions to move the character. So I can give Kim, for example, here um, the ability to move around and use this character. This is perfect for when you, uh, you want uh, a miniature to be a player's character. So they get privilege to move that character around and they can then yeah, explore the world with that character. You can also remove yeah. player permissions the same way. You can set the size. Uh, you can make it tiny. You can make it fly. <laughs> and things like that. So GM tools are great. That's where you rename it. So I've renamed this guy Shroomer. Because he's my little shroom. He's your little shroom. My little shroom. Actually, it's actually his real name. The, the character or the... Uh, what do you call it? The uh, miniature name is actually Shroomer. So let's give him another name. Let's call him Mr. Shroomer. Make him Mr. Shroomer. Or maybe it's a it's a it's a woman. I don't know. But Shroomer, Mr. Shroomer for now. Oh, Mrs. Shroomer. <laughs> Mrs. Shroomer. It's like the Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head uh, debate in America right now. Yeah. The head. No God. Uh, 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 it's a gender-free yeah. character now. I think. It's yeah. Perfect. So anyway, we can also make Shroomer a unique character, which means that this character can follow us along on every board and we can't have a duplicate. Like if I create another Mr. Shroomer, if I put it on another Shroomer, it won't be related to this one in any way. And I can find it and unique creatures. So here we have a unique Captain Guard and we have a unique Mr. Shroomer. So if I put down Mr. Shroomer here now, he will disappear from where he was before. Uh, and if I put down just a normal Shroomer, he will still be here. So that's the difference. And that way I can teleport him wherever I need him, which is perfect. Because now I have Mr. Shroomer. We can also kill. Yeah, Mr. We can kill him. Just kill menu and kill character. Pew! Poor Shroomer. Poor Shroomer. And go back and put him back in. He's back! And uh, we can also go in stats. We have the HP stat on the first menu, but we can open another stat and we can give these stats names. That is done from the GM menu uh, over here. We can rename stat. We can say stamina or we can name it, I don't know, personality. And all of a sudden, Shroomer has a personality. Ooh, yeah, I found that very cool. <laughs> so personality, we can raise that by 26 out of 50. I just made just like really that. Cool we have oh, I didn't make it. a stamina gauge, a weapon stall, or we have. Where are you doing? I'm just going through the character to see how how you can use characters in this game. And. As I've selected Shroomer now, I can go into exploration mode, just cancel building mode, and I can walk him about. Right now I'm using the shift and the arrow key arrows. Arrow keys. You should visit my weapon stand. I, I, yeah, I so we can also just take the mouse and lift Shroomer up and put him down wherever we want to. And we are going to go check out a weapon stand. If we don't want yeah. to carry him all the way, we can press shift and teleport him by left clicking and here Shroomer can now buy some nice weapons from this lovely lovely little blacksmith and the shady dealer and yeah. if you're wondering why everything is orange it's because I used the tab to enter the GM mode where I can see through walls and see characters wherever they are highlighted and that way I can oh, see I that's a nice way to shop. I am naming actually. him into a lovely blacksmith. A lovely bat. You can also make him unique if you want to. And that means what? Right now, what characters also have emotes, which is we have three. I love the twirl. The, the twirl, twirl is lovely. I love the twirl. So that is actually awesome. the basics of moving a character about in Tailspire. You can teleport them by holding down shift and left clicking. You can rotate them by holding an alt and uh, using the left uh, left mouse button. And you can right click to get the menu 
it can just pull up or down on these different stats. And of course, fly! <laughs> and fly. Let's and if you hold down me. control when you select the character that is flying, you can actually de de decide the height of the flight as well. Whee! That'd be shady venture pose here. That's the that's the that's the thing about this tree. Everything is shady. We don't know how, but it's just shady. It's a whole street with shady stuff. So, can I done? You can also decorate with dice. Oh, there we go. Well, yeah, and you can also use the dice as, as dices. Yeah. Is there any cashier machines? No, it's not because it's a fantasy. Never mind. I did not say anything. Oh, you rolled 14. On yeah. my street. 13 minutes. It's a good street for rolling dice. dice. And a good thing, the GM can also decide to roll hidden dice if they want to do that. And yeah, I can still see them because I'm a GM. Yeah. But they will be invisible to players. They, are, they will see that the GM has rolled, but they will not see the result, which is good because I just rolled a natural one which is bad <laughs> in most games. But in our game engine, it actually um, can be a good thing too. I mean, you want to roll high, but you, yeah. if you roll other dice high and just one, it doesn't. I kind of like uh, the dice system in, in, in our game. Or yeah, it's, we could actually break it down a bit if uh, people are interested in hearing about it. Uh, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're interested. Yeah, it's, it's, you, you have to be interested. It's yeah. our, our motor. Just yeah. do it. So what I just did is a full dice uh, dice sweep, which is a GM tool where I can remove all the dice from the board. And uh, I'm going to move to my cam while you keep building here. So in our upcoming role-playing engine, we will be using mainly the D10 which is a lovely die, if you ask me. And uh, what you will do is you'll actually roll two of them at the same time, at least two of them at the same time. And you'll add the score together and you'll have your dice roll. Easy enough, right? And this is where it gets complicated because you can get advantage or disadvantage on your rolls. And mostly you'll have advantage on your rolls because you'll be trained in whatever you're doing or you'll be at least uh, somewhat, uh, what do you call it, proficient. And once you get a uh, proficiency or, or a advantage, you add another D10. You can add as many D10s as uh, seems logical. However, when you roll them, you only count the two highest. It's still two D10 that matter. So here, for example, a one and a 10 and a seven would be 17. You uh, ignore the lowest die. So, for example, I can roll again and see what happens. I will get a 5, a 7, and a 1. So I ignore the 1. 5 plus 7 is 12. Excellent. That's 12. That's quite a good result. However, as we add more dice to the lovely roll here, let's roll five of them at the same time, the chances are that you'll get a pair. For example, oh, we didn't get one, oh, but the 10 and a 9, that's 19. That's kind of a good roll as well. But what happens is when you get pairs, you get pair bonuses. So you can get extra points added to your roll. You still only count the two highest, but you can get up to uh, four of a kind or five of a kind, which means you'll get a lot of pair bonuses to add to your final result. Bonus. Exactly. You can even go to Yetzi if you're lucky. <laughs> if you're lucky. So uh, Kim actually made an incredible roll last time we tested these rules out. He was rolling, what yeah. was it, like uh, three, three D10s. And you also got to add a favor from one of, your, uh, one of the gods. So he, add, yeah. so he added a D4 to the final result. 
so he actually oh, so that roll by the way was kind of good show so you got two nines and that is 18 but also oh. two nines so that Excellent. means you get three extra so that's yeah one. so you got 18 and then a pair of bonus for the two nines which is 21 no wait sorry yeah 21 are they are you you know that your dice has you know in the way for my video oh sorry i can do another dice yeah. Dice claim. Shoo, there you go. Keep building. So yeah, Kim rolled an incredibly good roll. He added a d4. Uh, so the d4 was a favor from a god. So whatever result the d4 showed, it would add to his final score. And of course, he rolled three tens, which means that he got 20 for because the two highest were two d tens that showed 10. And then he had a triple pair bonus or a triple bonus because he had three tens. That's that would add six. another six points to his score, which made it 26. And then, of course, the four, the D4 that he rolled showed four, which was the highest possible. So all four yeah. dice showed the highest possible score, which was kind of, kind of strange. It was, <laughs> it was very it was unlikely. But very I was good. happy. Yeah, exactly. I was just like, too bad. This is just a test thing. Test <laughs> exactly. Throwing, it's about I would see. kick ass in a fight. Well, we yeah. were role playing, so you were actually in. You were interrogating someone, and yeah, you used I your were, magical yeah, sword it, to use yeah. the magic favor from the god, and it sort of worked yeah. like the uh, the Wonder Woman lasso of truth, where you just. You just mm -hmm. smacked, he was an inbred hick, and you just smacked his uh, speaking disorder right off of him. Yeah. That's because I was, the yes. GM was so shocked that he forgot to play the character. <laughs> keep on the character. <laughs> exactly. Lost the character. Well, I got information out, and I, yeah. I did a great, great, great game. That way it was. But it's kind of it's kind of funny. I was playing with, with Brian, and... Uh, he always plays character that likes to go berserk and this time he played a character that is a goblin in our world is a goblin um, and they are kind of easy to get excited uh, and uh, i actually managed to kill more than he did on that oh. playoff and i played a character that wasn't really fighting it was nice it was fun <laughs> I so like I like goblins. The goblins in our world they uh, can set themselves aflame if they get too excited. Yeah. So you don't want to excite a goblin. <laughs> yes, overexcited goblin. How many magic stuff is it in this prop? Uh, we can it's always find it. Stuff. Just make it beautiful. <laughs> well, that is what I like to do. Oh, bookshelves. There is going to be bookshelves here. No, I am just saying that. Because it's going to be. Ooh, bookshelves. We have book piles and bowls. Oops. Oh no, that didn't work. It's a little bit frustrating with the whole. Uh, it's it's decided that in a square it's supposed to be in the middle, and you want it not to be in the middle. Yeah, I think some of those issues will be resolved in the Chimera build, but they will be working on a grid system because otherwise this game would be well, too heavy for anyone to run. Impossible to yeah, play, yeah and impossible to exactly. jump around in. So uh, I am understanding it. I am not. <laughs> You're not accepting it. I am. No. Can I? No, I can't clip. I can only clip up and down. I can't clip. You can clip inside things as well. What? <laughs> inside. <Man. laughs> I want it to be on middle of the bench. Yeah. How do I do that? Oops, that's it's not right. 
Ah, book pies. It's just no. It's just it's just no. Okay, I will I will put my book pies over here. I am making piles of book. Shelf. It is a very nice game. I love the the style of the not everything. Actually. Not lie. And they're consistent with their style. We were talking the other day when we were uh, discussing uh, Valheim, how like they have <laughs> sort of a so, a little bit of so. twisted art style. Like they have one art style in the menu and another one in the in the loading yeah. screen and then everything is very beautiful at a distance and then close up it's more like runescape type and yeah it's lovely but weird lovely but weird that's a good exp yeah exactly a beer rug i want a beer rug i have beer? no idea why you mean a bear rug or maybe they spilled oh, yeah, beer on sorry. it a bear rug. <laughs> well maybe they spilled beer Bear on the bear rug. I don't know. Somewhere around here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Weirdest thing ever. But it's a it's a magic uh, place. Oh, okay. The 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 props area is it's interesting. It's a big mess. If you ask me, it's like. You don't really know if if you're gonna find what you're looking for until you find it. Mage, is there any mages here? Maybe I need a mobile person who pretends to be. No. But I like that you're this turning out very well. And I'm just I feel sorry for uh, for the merchant when it starts raining. <laughs> yeah. Well. This is a shady place and it rains. <laughs> this might not be my answer. It never rains. This place. It's, it's, a, it's a shady place. That, that, that's your point. He's gonna be selling, he's selling stuff and he is feeling awesome about it. We have Cameron here telling he, us that it's well, he, very he, cool to see the world coming to life. Well, he is a magician, so he will. Uh, oh, thank you, Cameron. Uh, well, I. I think he's a magician, so he will just have some magical bubble that protects him from rain. Right? Ah, no? of course, bubbles, magical bubbles. <laughs> magical bubble. That's How would you explain this? Magic. Everything is magic. magic. Well, actually, in our world, we have magic, but not in not in the same sense that people are maybe used to. Uh, yeah. Should I continue explaining? Yeah, our let's let's magic? explain our, uh, how we think about magic and maybe actually tell us what we're inspired of. Uh, yeah, because we. Yeah, okay. We I, I will start explaining magic, and you will you will later on explain yeah. where where we where we where we get the ideas of. Okay. Yeah, and where that okay. person got their idea from. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it continues in a loop. Anyway, no. Okay, so uh, magic in in our world is more based on secrets. Uh, we call them secrets, actually. We don't call them magic at all. We call them secrets. Um, we have different uh, we have different things. We have witchcraft as well, and we have runes and crafting, and we have... Alchemy. Uh, we, yeah, but let's talk about what people would think as pure magic. Stuff that cannot happen happens just because the, pe the person wants it to happen. Kind of thing, like a magic. So let's, let's talk about that. It's called secret in a world. So secrets, uh, as you know, if you learn a secret from somebody and you spread it, the secret no longer keeps the power it gives anymore because you have started to spread the secret. So that is kind of the, the, the principle, the, the basic of our magic system. Um, so what it, what it is about is that if you know a secret, let's say you know the secret for, for rain, you know how to make stuff rain. You're the only one in the world that knows that secret, and therefore you are also the most powerful one because you can create rain, like anytime. But you're the only one who knows how to. 
But let's say you start to spread this secret around. You spread it to you. You get like apprentices, and you teach them how to do it. And then they teach people how to do it, and it starts to spread. So let's let's say hundred people can know this of the secret. Um, then you no longer can create rain any in like in, in the, the same way. way. No, exactly. Yeah, you can maybe create a small cloud above your head, and it rains on upon you, maybe. Or you can make it um, drip a little bit. Yeah. And I also like so to think of it as uh, like when everyone can do it, it's it's not magic anymore. It's science or it's yeah. everyday life. Uh, yeah. And my example for this is like speaking, like words. Words used to be powerful secrets. Uh, if if I'm trying to explain this to someone, I usually use that as a, as an example. Just imagine that if if words were powerful secrets and uh, now everyone can speak so it's nobody sees speaking as magical however with speaking you can do a lot of things you can make people go to war you can make someone cry you can make someone feel emotions they wouldn't feel otherwise yeah. so the power of the secret is still there but it's sort of diluted and it's it's for everyone so Everyone knows what you're doing, and therefore they, they, you don't have the same power over them. But if you were the only one who could speak, you could command everyone to do as you wanted, and you could like shape the world as you wanted. You could, you could yeah. be the only one who knew how to lie, so you could say something, and it would be instantly true. Yeah. So I think like that's the power of secrets. If you know a secret that no one else knows you have the power to shape the world but the more people who know about it the less influence you have upon creation itself and the people around you it's like how i like to see uh, see it as well anyway yeah so that is kind of that's the kind of starting mechanic for the, the role playing motor as well so yeah. um instead of having Magical trees, we have secret trees instead, different from different gods and different stuff like yeah. that. Um, which I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. In my opinion. And so maybe someone that. watching this now is like screaming, I know exactly what this is. Maybe they do. Or maybe we've changed it so much that they don't recognize it. But we are heavily, heavily inspired our magic system from reading the uh, King, Killer, King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss. Yeah. He uses a soft mm. magic sift system called uh, naming, where if you know the true name of something, you have power over that thing. And in our case, if yeah. you know the secret of rain, you have power over rain. Or in his case, it would be this, the name of the wind, as his first book is called. If you, ha if you know the name of the wind, you can call upon it. And they have great examples of that, how, name, how names have power. It's like, yeah, but I know your name, so I can scream and you will look over at me and wonder what I want. And you'll come over to me because I screamed your name. So I have power yeah. over you because I know your name. Which is kind of neat. It is kind of neat. Yeah. And, uh, and it's kind of cool. Yeah. So it's sort of inspired. And our witchcraft and our room crafting system is also heavily inspired by Patrick Ruffus. Oh. Yeah. We <laughs> so, love Patrick Ruffus. Yeah. He okay. has this. Uh, if you haven't read his, if you haven't read his his uh, his book, do it. Yes. They're great. They're great. They are so well written. And. and uh, yeah. Unfortunately, haven't finished the Chronicles yet. There's a third book coming, and it's been coming for a long time it's it's never seeing the day of light, <laughs> light of day no yeah. uh, but uh, yeah, they are inspired by the hard magic system implied in his books which is called sympathetic magic where where you uh, use sympathetic bindings to influence things that are similar that have a sympathetic yeah. binding to each other uh, and that is in itself is inspired by sort of spiritual magic traditions from from thousands of cultures here in the real world. We have druidic magic, which is like one thing, uh, but the power of the same and things like that. And we have voodoo magic where you can stick 
oh, stick needles into a doll, which is not really voodoo, but you get the idea that uh, something that is similar to something can influence the real thing and vice versa. So we, uh, in our magic system that we're building for the role-playing engine, we're working with the same sort of traditional ideas that you can uh, throw uh, galders and uh, hexes on on your enemies by using things that are similar to them or links to them. If you have their hair or if you have a piece of metal that is the same metal as their armor or sword is made of, you can influence that metal that you have to influence the metal that they have and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, somebody asked us, did you say secrets? Oh, well, yes. yes. Secrets and then Aeolotiola. <laughs> I have a hard time saying that. We did say yes, secrets. We did say secrets. But secrets is a thing. Yes, yeah. but we don't talk about the secrets. The first oh, rule of secret, secret club is you don't talk about the secrets. <laughs> I am. I don't know. I. By the way, I am making a, a goblin merchant place. So that means it's just random stuff. <laughs> then you right. need to put a goblin merchant there as well. Yes, I saw the head merchant, so I was doing that. Oh, wonderful. Uh, I'm gonna pop down another bridge here in a minute. I just put some random stuff here, and it's kind of a gift box. It's like, these are too, too colorful for this game. I want a gravestone. Can I just put a, can I put a gravestone here? It's so random. I just wish, do, can, you, I mean, like, can't you click on, 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 Let's see, not the, on, <laughs> on the X, not the Y levels, the X level. I want to go in, in, not in the height or, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Where do you want to go? I want to go left or right. Yeah, you, you have Q and E and Twitch you have A and D if you want to use the uh, keyboard. If you want to move around the map, or, or or do you want to move a certain object? No, I want to I, I, I want to move an object like into another object. Yeah, so I'm gonna switch to my stream to just show how it's done. So I could uh, pick up a copy of uh, uh, this this one here, and if I hold shift. Yeah, and I want it to stand like next to the other one. Yeah, you can't put it next to the other one because it's a grid system, so it'll end up inside uh. of it. This is okay. the closest it can stand, or you can put it inside ah, the wall okay. behind it. Okay, now I put it up. Okay. Damn it, now I put something inside then it. I, I can't get it out. Inside. Oh no, it's inside the wall. This is a forge. I can't have a forge. That would be weird. <laughs> That's why I should have it. Goblins are weird. They are so weird. I love the goblins in this in this world. They are the different type of goblins. Uh, the ones we have kind of started to explore and create are the Nuxford Desert Goblin, uh, what do we call them? They have a name. The Re I mean, what, the, the Muradas tribe. Muradas stands for home. And the mountain. Muradas tribe, yeah. 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 And they are, they're kind of uh, inspired by, I don't know if people here have played Magic the Gathering. Um, it's a trading card game anyway. They have goblins in them. They're kind of green, pointy nose, pointy ears, kind of goblins. Uh, green brownish so they're kind of inspired by those in the looks um, but then again I'm like I um, told you before they when they get excited enough to set themselves aflame it's kind of like they are really warm creatures and they when they get scared or excited they start to produce kind of more of an oily they have an oily skin already but yeah and their sweat oily. is sort of uh, also oily and uh, full of these bends yeah. and uh, substances and then they get overheated when they get scared or excited so they set themselves aflame so it's kind of kind of funny so in by tradition in the world of fey goblins usually have to have a bucket of water or sand with them when they are uh, visiting like populated places um because it's uh more like a it's a thing you do as a goblin to show respect and, you know so they they, they bring a, a bucket of water or sand with them in case they start to set a flame people can um, yeah. make them stop doing things um 
So that's kind of kind of funny. We have other kinds of goblins as well. We have the ones that are not. So the the next world goblins, the uh, they are still kind of humanoid in the sense that they can talk and they can and they can interact with other sentient yeah. beings. They're not very world. bestial or very, not very monstrous. No, they're not very beastly, they're not very monstrous. Uh, we also have like, these are not written down yet in a sense. I have an idea, spoken with Hank about it. They are more like a snowy type of goblin. They are, they are fur, uh, they have fur, they live in the, in the mountains. They are not, they are more like beastly, they're not evil, they're more like a, more like a pug. <laughs> they are not as big. <laughs> they're tiny, so they are actually used in in like noble women's uh, noble men's beds as because they are still warm and they still produce heat by their own body temperature um, above a lot. So they usually have them in their bed as uh, bed warmers, like pugs was breeded to do. Um, so they they are used uh, under the, in the blankets, but you also have to keep them very calm because if they get too excited, they start. So yeah, it's, the, the main it's thing when we design goblins for our role playing game is that goblins are supposed to be weird. It's yeah. like we haven't even decided what their origin is because they weren't created like uh, like the orcs or the Ixnas. They weren't created by the evil god, and so mm. they're not. But they're not like beautiful and like they can't have been created by Astra, for example, and they don't really look like dwarves so they're probably not created by Turon and they aren't really animals or humans in that sort of way so they probably weren't created by Maru either they're sort of just weird <laughs> somewhere in between all of them yeah and they're yeah. like they created themselves kind of yeah and if you wonder why they're... I didn't mention Okra, which is the fourth of the forgers, uh, it's because Okra's people is secret and we don't want to give too much away no. about them yet. No. Maybe. Because they... You're doing a campaign they... about that, I think. I am doing a campaign, up, campaign about that, mm -hmm. uh, about the, the Okra's people. And they are, as it is now, uh, the people of Okra are not supposed to be released in the role playing game. No. beginning anyway so uh, they are really secretive and not to be to be shown yet no. they are really cool though i love them yeah i'm saying that and then it's a powerful secret anything, so. it's a very it's a very it, powerful it, it's secret. a very powerful secret so therefore they cannot be told yet yeah, the world is not ready for this this secret i would decide that also this goblin merchant will have just a pile of rubble because that is yeah, sure. That is a it makes sense. Thing to Goblins have. are weird. But you'll need to pop Rocket down that pile. goblin now because we are uh, reaching the end of our stream for today. Okay, okay, I'm making a goblin. I'm making a goblin. I'm making a goblin. <laughs> and we're going to do a little panoramic shot of your fantastic uh, merchant square you did here. Oh, that was a way too big rock pile. I need a smaller pile. Something like that. Rock hanging. Oh my god, I want a rock hanging. Okay, I can't. I don't have that. Okay, I need to make a goblin. They had goblinoids here. Make a goblin. Not a fighting goblin. Sure. Okay, you can look like. <laughs> can be a sorcerer. Okay, so this goblin merchant uh, looks like a sorcerer, but he, he can He doesn't know any magic at all. Any of secrets. He just wants to look badass <laughs> while he's selling. He thinks that it sells more. Oh, that is, look, he, he looks he's amazing. Like, I am talking to you. I am a very powerful goblin. Let's and make him glow. Easy. Let's give him a torch effect as well. He's glowing. Yes. He is. He is really selling it. He is. He. He is. Um. How would you like this? Our. Oh. I'm gonna give him a shiny crystal as well, because. Oh, don't. Nice. I like those. Yeah. Because you can't be a goblin a... peddler without selling shiny crystals to people who walk by. Oh, I love those! Those <laughs> are really pretty. When did you find those? I was going through the top and didn't find anything. I love it. So yeah, this is the merchant street I just built. This, yeah, it's amazing. This stream. So let's uh, cool. assume, what have I done? I've, I've done a canal with three bridges. <laughs> you, have a, you have made really cool gothic 
bridge. I yeah. love those bridge. Okay, that was All right, really nice. so let's uh, let's round off today's stream. We've talked about some lore. We talked about secrets. Uh, we've talked about the role playing engine a lot, and uh, we've hinted at some storylines that we'll talk about in our very first storytelling stream next week. Mm. So if you want yeah. to know more about the almost spoilers that we shared today, we uh, hope to see you next week at seven o'clock on Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> but let's check yeah. out here. We start with the okay. amazing goblin peddler. What what are your well, thoughts here? Kim? I will. I will. You take you take a picture. I will also talk that uh, you can find us on Patreon. Um, we would love you if you want to be a patron and help us out fill in this world. Um, there is everything going from one dollar up to twenty five dollars, uh, and it's really creating uh, helping us creating this world, uh, giving back to you in the end. It's gonna be more about the role playing engine and such and it's also going to be more about our world the world of play um and actually if you become a patron you will be a part of the world you will start populating the world because you will be able to create a character in the world that we can manage and have uh, depending on the different level of patronage of course yeah uh, you can also find me, Kim, on Instagram, uh, kim.r.anderson, and Hank, you can find him on Instagram as well as Hanko del Tango. Del Tango. Uh, it's going to be glorious and it's going to be amazing. So go in there, uh, follow us, subscribe on YouTube, please do that. We would love Super Chat, that is far from what we are, but we will... Every small step is a big step for what humanity. Did you say that? I would say it's a it's a huge step for a goblin because yeah. goblins are tiny. Exactly. I'm just anyway. I'm just admiring um, the amazing poisoner that you put here. The last, very last at the end of the street, he looks just absolutely amazing. I gave him a little yeah. light show here as well. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Did you see his name also? Shady Merchant, right? No, no, the, the, the goblin Shady. gave him a name. Did you oh. see the name? Powerful Goblin! <laughs> With quotation powerful. Anyway, that was that was help from us this time. Uh, oh, he's floating. Yeah, make him float. The funny part is he's obviously paying the mage next door <laughs> to make him look badass. <laughs> <laughs> that was he doing. It's not purple at all. Okay, anyway, thank you for today. Do you have anything else to say, Hank, or will we end this now? I don't think we say uh, stay safe out there. There's still a pandemic going on. And uh, if yeah. you want to join us uh, next week, we would love to have you as we explore the myth and lore of this world. See you then. See you then. Take have care. Bye. Bye.